It's WOSN's podcast, The Three Wise Men. I'm Danny Holbrook, joined alongside Miles Holiday and Randy Roberts, and our special guest, Patrick Kamler. Gentlemen, welcome to The Three Wise Men. Great to be here. It always is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Can't believe it's week seven already. The mayor of Toledo, Randy Roberts. No, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I don't want that. Oh, Trump. no, no. The mayor of Northwest Ohio. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Toledo, okay. Northwest Ohio. We should have gave it to Michigan years ago. I'll agree with that. <laughs> Patrick, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Doing Good. fantastic. Good. All right, guys. We're going to start it off. We're going to get it right into it. The Diamond Dave Bowen. Best thing we saw all week. We're going to start with you, Mr. Holiday. Well, you know, things, because Dave always says it's got to be things, right? Right, it's got to be There's things. There's so many things. things. There's yeah. only – so I have three things for you guys. Um, as a football guy, I absolutely loved the, the, the elements being part of high school football last Friday. Um, because everybody loves football in the summer where you're throwing it around. It's nice and fun. And early in the season, it's 70, 80 degrees, and we're throwing the ball. And it's a lot of fun because it's nice weather out. And then you forget, October rolls around, and it's physicality and running the football and the elements. And those teams that can handle those things are really successful. So it to me, it was the root of football, and guys had to be tough to win football games. And that was a nice reminder on Friday. Um, also, Amari Wash for – Elida, Randy, and I have got to see this guy the last couple of weeks. Everybody in Northwest Ohio, do not kick to Amari Wash. <laughs> you said that please last week. do yeah. not kick right. to him. No, do it. Makes for good TV it, it when does. he returns it. it. Exactly. So please do. Yeah. Everyone, please kick to him. Kick directly to him. <laughs> it, 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 kick <laughs> directly to him and do not block. Play by play guy. You like yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. very much so. <laughs> he's absolutely electric with the football in his hands, and he's got great feet. So yeah, you, you, at your own peril, kick to Amari Wash, and then Zach Osborne for Anna. Five touchdowns mm. against Delphi St. John's. The guy was absolutely amazing. Randy, what's the best thing you saw all week? So it kind of goes with what Miles said. The best thing I saw all week was uh, us dealing with a slight delay because of some LED lights yeah. yes. and then still getting out after a kickoff was pushed back to 730, still getting out a half hour earlier than we did the previous <laughs> week when we saw a 62 to 56 game. So the best thing I saw was a very quick football game that I appreciated. Love that, a whole right? heck of a lot. <laughs> Patrick, what's the best thing you saw all week? Well, you know what's interesting? I actually was off of calling games last week, which I was not expecting. So I had uh, some personal time, which was nice. But uh, I was reminded that the high school players are significantly tougher than we give them credit for because mm -hmm. a young man at my church played uh, the entirety of a football game. Didn't know it at the time, of course. But at the at that time, he played almost the entire game with a bruised kidney, oh, and wow. did not realize it until you know you get you get done and the adrenaline starts to wear off, and you're like, huh, my kidney hurts. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts back there. Yeah. I wonder what's going on. Wow. So had to have a little bit of a hospital stay, but everything checked out, and he's he's good to go. And I don't know if he's going to play this week. I, that that's just, that decision has been made. But um, when you care about something and you want to pursue something. Uh, you do whatever it takes to get it, and um, you know, kudos to him for playing through the discomfort, whatever there was there. And it's just a nice little reminder that hey, you know, things hurt on us a little bit more than they used to, uh, but not for these guys that are you know thirty odd years younger than we are. <laughs> so. That's terrific stuff, guys. Uh, I had Alan East Columbus Grove last week, and Gilly and I talked before the game and the pregame show. We talked about you know it was obvious everybody had to run the ball in those conditions last week, gentlemen. <laughs> I saw a young man run the ball. I, 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 look, I don't know if he's the best running back in the state of Ohio. He's got a case for it, uh, and it's Trenton Barraza. This kid is absolutely spectacular. 25 carries, 308 yards, four touchdowns. He carried them on his back. He was dominant. I'm not saying he's the best back in Ohio, but in Northwest Ohio, he's number one for me, guys. He is Fantastic. He does it all. He can catch it out of the backfield. He, he can go between the tackles. He can outrun you. He is just a workhorse, and his – Work ethic, from what I've heard from the coaches and the community, second to none, and that's why he is as good a player as he is in Northwest Ohio. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, he's done it with three different quarterbacks, right? Yes. So there's yes. been times where they say everybody knows he's going to get the football because they're kind of questioned at quarterback and still getting 308 yards. Yeah, there was no question about what they were going to do. They, they started Kyle Hopkins as the wide receiver at quarterback last week. He did a really nice job because all he had to do was turn around and hand it to number three, <laughs> and Trenton just took off. And, 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 I, and I laughed 
laughing and I joke about that, but that's what they did. He was spectacular. You watch one of those games, guys, where you see a kid gets in the zone and you just know. You just know it's his night. Mm -hmm. That was his night. They, 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 they would put six, seven, eight man fronts up there. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. He was, he was fantastic. And Barraza is one of those kids that's been in there since he was a freshman. He's been seeing significant time since he was a freshman at Grove. So he knows that offense. He knows that better than probably anyone else on the field at that point in time. And he has developed physically. Even I mean, even as a ninth and 10th grader, he was still a guy that was hitting holes pretty hard and making those runs and doing all those things that uh, uh, Andy Schaefer's asked him to do at Columbus Grove. And he has just gotten better with age. And now I think you're seeing the culmination of all of that effort where he's able to rattle off 300 yards. And uh, again, I'm with you. I don't know if he's the best back in the state. Yeah. I think he's up there, certainly. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how that – continues here in the last six weeks of the football season. We head into the playoffs and uh, where they can go and if Barraza can uh, put Columbus Grove on his back and see how far he can take them. Yeah, we saw them. You, and you talked about it earlier, Miles. They lost their quarterback. They were on their third quarterback. And a team like Columbus Grove, they're really, really good. And you just look at them. Nothing phases them. The wind, the rain, the third-string quarterback, they just came out and they just played smash-mouth football. This is a team, I'm not kidding you, that can go really, really deep in the playoffs. That uh, showdown at the end of the year against Bluffton is going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. Uh, both teams, you know, every single week you got to score or three touchdowns to beat them because their defenses are just so amazing, right? I think uh, uh, Bluffton gives up like five points a game yeah. and, and uh, um, Columbus Grove gives up like nine points a game. So it's going to be a, a battle. I'm hoping, Randy and I, we were lu lucky enough to get assigned that game. I'm hoping for a rainy night that night because that'd be a great old school night. I, I want to know where you guys are going to sit because every media outlet in Northwest Ohio is going to be there. <laughs> They're going to have you in the end zone or on the stands or what. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was really jealous when I saw that. So good for you guys. That's going to be the game of the year in the Northwest conference yeah i saw the jealousy in your eyes when you said that I, you can see it steely i was just staring at you i was staring at you don't get sick randy <laughs> randy drink out of this it'd be terrible if you had an accident on the way home tonight wouldn't it randy jeez danny man i'm sorry which randy, route do you friend. take on the way home <laughs> mayor of mercy health randy roberts um. <laughs> All right, Miles, uh, can I ride with you? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Miles, I'm going to let you introduce our guest for the night and uh, take it from there. Yeah, um, Patrick Kamler, uh, you guys know him, uh, a legend uh, in the sports world here around Lima. But the reason we wanted to have you on, Patrick, because uh, Sports Report is uh, such a, a big part of the community for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, you were a major part of the Sports Report. So, you know, we wanted to have you in to talk about that because uh, it's been off the air, what, two years now? Yeah, I think the second second season with it out with it off. Yes, we still get people at games will come All up. The time. Hey, All the what, time. what happened to the sports report? What, what, yeah. Are you guys going to bring back the sports report? So it has a great deal of meaning to the people in the area. So we wanted to talk to you about that, and uh, yeah. why don't you walk us through about uh, how you got started with the sports report, and you know maybe some memories that you uh, some fond memories. Sure. Well, uh, you know it. it was something that just kind of got dropped in my lap one day. I know that sounds kind of funny to say it, but that's, that's really how it came upon me. I started here at WOSN, well, before it was WOSN. WTLW did all of the sports back then, and 20 years ago I was brought on as a sports producer. And I helped produce Touchdown Friday, which was the primordial goo from which Sports <laughs> Report emerged, essentially. And Sports Report took off in 2005, but I wasn't here at that point in time. I, I came later on, and it really was a random conversation that I had with the, with the general manager, Kevin Bowers, at the time. And we went out to lunch. He said, hey, um, would you be interested in anchoring Sports Report for a season because of some personnel things he was trying to work through? And I was doing a lot of play-by-play -play like you guys do and thought, oh, all right, sure, you know, why not? We'll do it. And then that was a, that was a fun period. I, I came in and did football and uh, had a blast doing that. And I was a guest on there a couple different times while Andy Lynch was uh, producing the show. And, and then when I came on, it was one of those things that kind of fit like putting a hand into a glove because mm. I had been doing it for a number of years and I uh, had experience in the past doing it. And it was just a uh, really fun environment. It was a very uh, fast paced, uh, intense environment, which I do like. Uh, as many of you know, I'm, I'm also a pastor and you know what, there's not a lot of intense, fast paced environmental <laughs> things on a, on a Sunday morning. And if there is, there's probably something going horribly <laughs> wrong in the church. So we try to avoid those as well. So uh, that's how I, I got plugged in, and it's really been a blast to do it. And I know everyone sees me or saw me when I was doing the show, but there are 
uh, dozens of people that come around and make that show what it is. We've got we've got people that run around and they get video, they go out and they shoot highlights, they bring it back in, they put all that stuff together. There's a ton of people working behind the scenes to make sure that it goes off. The sports report never really could get off the ground uh, if it was just me. There are a lot of people who bring that back in together. So very, uh, very fortunate to have had that time. And, and I'll be honest, I, there's part of me that wishes it was still going, that we were still um, achieving that level of commitment and covering in high school sports. But I'm, I'm grateful and thankful for the time that uh, I was involved with it. Now, you had the experience behind the desk from um, being at Kent State, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, so that wasn't a, a huge departure for you going by, from play-by-play to getting behind a desk and anchoring a show. No, in fact, what, what was funny is when I first got into this business, I just wanted to do play-by-play. I was not ambitious in any way, shape, or form. Like, I saw guys do it on television, I thought – that that's what I want to do with with my with my life, and I did anchoring just as, hey, we need you to do this kind of thing, and that's kind of how I discovered it at Kent State. I auditioned and, and tried out for that, and oh, okay, well this 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 works out. But um, when I can get away from that, I would like to. And I didn't dislike anchoring. Obviously, I, I did it for a number of years, but I just preferred being in the booth more. I wanted to be there in the action. Uh, calling it and translating it for the audience. That's always what appealed to me a little bit more. Um, but with things were how they were transitioning here at the TV station, there was a point in time where I was needed to pull myself away from that and come back here and be on the desk. And I'd had plenty of experience producing things in the past. And yeah, it wasn't a, oh gosh, I hope I can figure this out on the fly. I'd been doing it for a number of years. I had done it in the past before I came in and and uh, and did this so the old riding a bike analogy yeah yeah kind of getting back in the saddle the first couple of shows were a, a little awkward for me but after a while it just yeah like putting on an old familiar t-shirt so i had been here a couple years for ws and my first year i did collar work second year they moved me to play by play third year i was here i'll never forget i got a call from ben who was our boss at the time and it was right after a game and he said danny we want you to come in after your game and sit with Patrick and do talk about your game on the sports report. And it was like Carson calling you over to the couch, <laughs> right? I'm going in to work with Patrick on the sports report. I'm telling you, I walked in that door that night and I thought, I thought Patrick just sat at the table and they just filmed him and he talked about the games. I'm telling the number of people running through this place and the yeah. people in the booth, there must have been 12, 15 people and the pizza and all this stuff. And I remember walking in here and thinking, I made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember doing that night, and I remember Shine was here that night, and you were here, and I got to talk about my game, and I walked out here, and I called my wife, I go, I just did the sports report. Because, <laughs> hey, look, everybody watched the sports yeah. report. It was, it was huge, you know? So, yeah, that, that was awesome for me that night. <laughs> and so, and it was a Chris Farley moment. You remember that? That was awesome. <laughs> remember, that, remember that time that I, I was on the show? You had me on the show. It was like, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, but it's really cool that the show was able to contribute to those experiences for people because there's going to be those things that people remember from the show, people that, tuned in and watched it every single week. Um, their kids were featured on the sports report, or maybe we were around long enough that they themselves were featured on the sports report, and they had an opportunity to kind of experience that. And uh, one of the things that I always wanted to do, too, was I wanted to get people on the show um, so that you hear voices besides mine talking about the action as it went in there. And actually, we wanted to do – it's one of those things where there were so many more things that I wanted to do with the show. We just didn't have the, the resources available to us. But um, we had people that we wanted to go to who were kind of uh, reliable that we could say, hey, um, can you come in and do five, six minutes on your, on your game, talk a little bit about it, and knew that they could come in – and talk about it and do a good job. And they were kind of known quantities. And you guys were all part of that. Um, Mark Shine, of course, was a part of that. Aaron Matthews was a part of that. And I might be missing some names, and I'm not, I'm not good at keeping and track of that. you still pick Danny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, Patrick doesn't remember that night. He's like, now he, said, now he said Ben called him. <laughs> Let's be clear. Right? No, but I, I called Danny a couple times, too, to, to help participate in a number of things as well. But... Um, and I, yeah, I don't do the whole list thing because the last show that we did, 
I thanked everybody, and I was I was very diligent. I got a piece of paper. I'm like, okay, I'm going to write down the names of everybody who was on the show and thank them. I didn't know it was going to be our last show, and wrote them down. And I went through the list. I put it in the prompter, and I thanked everybody, and I felt so good about myself because I always screw that part of it up. Right. I'm trying to thank people. We get off the air, and the one person that I didn't thank was the person that I stare at every <laughs> single week. Oh. The floor director who was Abby Beck, totally forgot her name. Oh. She was the only one I didn't mention. Wow. And I had something of a penchant for slamming the desk when things weren't going according to plan. And after the show, I was like, dang it! We'll do it I live. forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, that, that clip. That clip is my spirit animal. I know that. I've never seen you mad. I have. I have oh, it, oh, oh, it's happened. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one here in a second. But yeah, Abby, who I've looked at and taken cues from for uh, two or three seasons before that. Completely forgot her name. And I was mad. I was like, oh, Abby, I forgot your name. She goes, that's okay. Usually if you say Jennifer, I just kind of answer to that. And I was like, oh, all right, fine. But um, no, I, um, I, I won't say the name of the person because they did a terrific job 95% of the time on the show. And there's, it, it, there's a lot of pressure oh, I'm sure. in getting to your game, getting the highlight, right. coming back, editing it, putting together a shot sheet, and getting on here in time. There is an immense amount of pressure to do that, and anybody who does that um, is, is pretty phenomenal. Especially who does it for multiple seasons. Especially who does it for someone who's with someone who's kind of breathing down their throat to get things done in time. We had someone who had a game that was of a great deal of interest to the audience and to me as well. I said, "Hey, look, I want to make sure you have this for a block." So a block is like the very first part of the show. It was typically the games that I edited because I had to be back early because I was going to be on the desk. I want this game to run in the A block because it's a big it's a big matchup of the of the of the night. Okay, no problem. So gets back, he gets back, plenty of time, no issues, everything. We're five minutes out to the show, three minutes out to the show. Hey, where is that? <laughs> I'm yelling down the hallway. Oh, no. oh you're right. <laughs> yeah. Couple minutes. Okay. We don't have a couple of minutes. <laughs> the show open is running. Where is that bucket? <laughs> Silence. Oh no. Okay, well you gotta skip it. Because I don't have it, I don't have a choice. So I so we modify there was a lot of fixing things on the fly. I don't know if you ever picked that up watching the show. There was a lot of that. Uh, so all right, so we go to something else. We go to my stuff, and a lot of things we had in there were kind of built in. So we did the top five, that was already done. Prep profile, that was already done, a couple other things. And about halfway through the show. I was going to go back to that thing that I wanted in the A block. So bought this guy another half hour. We get to that point. It is still not done. And I think there's, there's probably footage of this somewhere here in the station where I say <laughs> this guy's name. <laughs> you are killing me! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we never get the highlight on the show. Oh, no. It oh, never no. happens. Well, no, the poor kid's probably crying in the bathroom. <laughs> Why is Patrick so mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it was me. You guys. This is what it's gonna be like. I don't want to work here. I want to do the show. I don't want to say their name. We'll call them Randy. Um, <laughs> Wait a no, minute. It wasn't Randy. <laughs> So uh, it was Mark Coons, wasn't it? it go, <laughs> no, no. Although Mark, Mark and I have, have had a few yelling at each other episodes in, in the past, too. So but, what was uh, what, what so, happened? So I get after the show and I, I, I power down. So, you know, Patrick on the set, Patrick on the set, <laughs> Calm down. third person, Patrick on the set. <laughs> that's not the that's not the same Patrick as in real it's life. Not. It's not. <laughs> Patrick on the set is way a different animal than Patrick in real life. <laughs> sort of. It's like the volume turned up. It's like the difference between, you know... It's his pro wrestling Rocky, gimmick. It's, 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 like, it's like Rocky Maivia and The Rock. It's, like, it's, like, the, it's like, you know, Vince McMahon the character <laughs> and Vince McMahon the man. They're not Mr. the same McMahon. person. You're fired! <laughs> so I go to this guy and went, what happened? He says, oh, I know what I did wrong. 
um, without getting into the technical things, he was trying to edit everything off this little tiny memory card, which uh, is a big no-no. If you're trying to edit things off a very small media, you can't do it. You have to load it into the computer. By the way, we've done this 400 times before this. So I don't know what happened. It was one of those like little mistakes, and, and, I, and I just pulled him aside and said, okay. We're not going to do this again ever, <laughs> are we? And you were verbally spanking him. <laughs> Did you ha- have a pitchfork in his chest no, while you're doing no. it? And to his credit, do you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> I cook pasta with JKB on this set right here. <laughs> Start cutting a wrestling promo on this kid in the back. Do you have any idea who I am? The Rock says he's gonna. No, so. He never did it again, to his to his credit. Well, of course not, because that was probably quit. the last night. Because yeah. <laughs> he left at 11.06. And no. Never uh, to be seen again. Patrick burned down his brother-in-law's tractor dealership. <laughs> and that's how Steven Spielberg got started. <laughs> and that's why Danny's doing play-by-play now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... It, it, it was a very... And I will, I, will, I will tell you that that story is relatively tame in comparison oh to some other ones. And I don't know or necessarily took uh, – it was a part of personally, but I know that there were – there have been a lot of shouting matches over the years. Uh, Mark Koontz and I got into a shouting match. This was years ago. This was before I was even an anchor. I came back, was trying to edit something. And the way they had everything set up wasn't that efficient. There were people that were having to – overlap using computers oh, yeah. that just wasn't going to work out. Fortunately, by the time I was running it, everyone kind of had their own PC. It worked It worked out with that one exception. But most every time it worked out. And I was assigned Mark's computer. So I'm editing my stuff, and he's pacing, trying to, you know, it's like, hey, I need, I need my computer. It's like, okay, man, I'm getting this done. It'll be done here pretty soon. And um, he starts, <laughs> hey, man, I need that computer. And I stand up and go, well, I'm editing on it right now. You have to wait. <laughs> Mark didn't take too kindly to that. <laughs> and let me just say that we finished this in the parking lot. Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. Good. There need, was no violence. I need some good from new Mark Coons fodder yeah, when right? I see him. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what was funny is that Mark and I actually developed a, a better relationship after that. It happens a lot. Kind of. Yeah, when you draw of, blood, that's what happens. Now yeah. you guys are blood brothers. And a lot of it, well, a lot of it was because, like, look, we both, we both care about the product. We both had a vested interest in making sure that we were putting our best foot forward. So we were, we all kind of, we both kind of saw ourselves on the same side after that. Um, and then you but, both went after that kid that messed up the A block. Yeah. <laughs> you combined forces. <laughs> you can make it powers. You, uh, do you know Mega what a powers combined? Do you know what a doomsday device is, kids? <laughs> That's what we. Uh, I called it Coons and Camler throw down on the playground too. <laughs> yes. That's what we executed. <laughs> it's uh, like the movie Step Brothers at the end. Yeah. Coons held him up, and I took off yeah. off the top rope. And do, do, you miss, do you miss it, Patrick? Because it was, I mean, like I said, my, my Sounds like he misses we, it, right? No, 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 no. We, we get, we get a it. great memory so we far. We still get it all the time. People, uh, after all the games, people, mm-hmm. hey, are they ever going to do that again? And they're like, look, I, you know, I don't make those calls, but it was such, a, it was such an iconic it was program. It really was. Yeah. I mean, we all watched it. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I do miss I do miss it sometimes. I, I'm someone who's always been very, okay, once we're done with this, I'm, I'm on to other things. And I don't look in the rearview mirror very often. Sometimes it's to my detriment, but I've always been kind of wired that way. Once we're, once we're done with this thing, it's time to move on to the next thing. And with Sports Report, it was, it was a little different because there was a period of time where, well, maybe – we were going to restart it like very shortly after the decision came down like wait we're going to restart it because we kind of we kind of did this fast and it was a little short-sighted in my view to cancel the show when we did and and how that whole situation was handled but once it was handled and once it number one once we saw we weren't going to bring it back and number two it's kind of like striking a set on a show it's like once the set's been torn down Mm. we're done and we had people that had moved on that we weren't going to get back and there were roles that had been pretty entrenched. Like we had someone who'd been part of our team from the beginning of the show. Oh, wow. She wasn't coming back. So it, it then turned into, well, okay, let's say we snap our fingers and say, hey, we're going to start it again in two months. Would we get people to get up and going? Maybe. 
but also would we get the advertisers back? Would we get all these other things that we needed to have back in order to do the show? So there are a lot of those things to consider. And in a vacuum, sure, you know, I would I would absolutely jump on and and do it again and and miss it to that extent, but also, hey, you know, moving on. Kramer got the Merv Griffin set out of a dumpster, so it can it's possible. We could resurrect New it. New right? edgier format. Yeah, right? Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the set is still there. Like, it's still in intact. I was being metaphorical, <laughs> Daniel, when I was saying those, that. Those aren't orange chairs from I the got, 70s. I got the dad call. <laughs> I went the proper name. <laughs> now, you, you mentioned something earlier that uh, there were some things that you wanted to do with the show but never really got to. Uh, what are... What are some of those things that were in Patrick's mind? Live studio audience. Oh, that would oh. be cool. That would be cool. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we weren't we weren't going for that specifically, but mm -hmm. I had one of the we had one of the salespeople here who just decided they're gonna sit and watch the show from, from here. I'm like, oh, okay. So he grabbed one of the chairs there in the studio and sat down. I'm pointing like this is TV. Um, grabbed one of the chairs here in the studio and he just sat and watched it and he just watched what I do at the set, people running back and forth, me yelling at people to get things in, <laughs> all this other kind of stuff. And at the end of it, he said, well, that was the most fun that I've had in a long time watching a show. He's like, you guys should like, broadcast this, like this, this behind the scenes aspect of it, because this was a lot of fun. This was an amazing thing to put together. I don't know how you do it on a, on a weekly basis. Which was, was kind of cool, and we thought, you know, I don't know that that could have gone anywhere, but it would have been kind of fun to, to have that. The things that we always wanted to do, that I always wanted to do, is I wanted to add the capability of doing a live report from the game after the oh, game. Oh, very nice. So oh, because, yeah, of the, cool. the, because of the how some of the timing was, one of the things that I wanted to implement, even if it was live to tape, you know, we could do something like, uh, hey, uh, Coldwater Marion Local wrapped up. Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday are here with it. Guys, you know, Marion Local with a win tonight. Uh, tell me about the game. And either we do it live because of how the timing worked yeah. or we'd record that ahead of time and then do that. We were able to do that a couple times on the show, but the the infrastructure, the timing, most, most of the timing just wasn't there consistently to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. having those live look-ins, I thought, would have added a, a lot to the show. Those would have been uh, fun to do. Um, wanting to incorporate more kind of interview segments and breaking up some of the, the highlight portions of it up a little bit more. Um, doing some things that also cater to an online audience. Something where, hey, extended highlights are on our YouTube page. Something oh. along those lines. All so that right, was something right. that... Because you had footage, right? Yeah. You always had extra footage. Yeah, yeah, we always we always had extra footage. We always had more than we ever showed people. Go online, go toward our WOSN YouTube page or WTOW YouTube page and check out the stuff that you didn't see on Sports Report. Or we do something separate for like the online audience. You know, it's kind of a way to, to bring them in and, and increase the audience there. So uh, there were a lot of those things and a lot of it again, infrastructure was missing, time was missing. The, the timing of a lot of stuff just kind of prevented a lot of that stuff from doing it. And there were a lot of things where we just needed, you know, one more person. Like, we just needed, yeah. like, a co-anchor or something like that, someone to kind of come alongside me and help out with some of those things. And that was just one of those things that never materialized long term. Like, mm. I had co-anchors for a little bit, but it was just one of those things that it didn't happen. It's like, man, this would have been great if we were able to pull this off, but we didn't. And that's the way it goes sometimes. All right, guys, let's uh, get to our high school games of the week and uh, preview each and every one of those. Patrick, thank you so much. Uh, you're going to stick around for the whole show. I'm hoping yeah, you hang are. Out. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Can, so, I, can I just mention one thing real quick? Uh, you ever say since, anything you ever want. since he said Kent State, it's been bothering me to say this. <laughs> Oh, no. Kent State. Can't read, can't write, Kent State. Oh. <laughs> Gee, he did That's that, like, right he did that like in a golden flash minute. Oh. oh. Did you get that? Are you glad you got that out of your system? Yeah, that's been. That's you been, feel that's better? Been, that's been, you know that's been, what been, he did to Mark Coon? That's that's been, Stick that's around, been, bud. That's been <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. I know that's, that's the reason why. why the Mark's, violent one here. I, I, I know that's the reason why Mark's bald now. I know he pulled all his hair out working here. But. 
<laughs> All right, guys, game one. Uh, Van Wert at Ottawa Glandorf. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday on the call. Guys, Van Wert really reeling right now. They've lost five in a row. Ottawa Glandorf off a rough start at the beginning of the year. They're four and three, guys. They've won three of their last five games. Miles, how you see this one stacking? Well, Randy, this will be what our third time that we've seen. Yeah, Ottawa we saw the, the first two games of the year with OG, and it was we, we saw the, the opening game with OG and Kenton. Liberty, no, Liberty Benton. Liberty Benton, Liberty Benton, excuse me. And I we we walked out of the stadium and we looked at each other and we're like, Oof. you know, because uh, Coach Schneider needed two, two wins for 200. Yes. And we looked at each other and we go, it might be another yeah, year until yeah. he gets it. And then we go back the next week and they win and we're like, well, what on earth happened? Yeah, they beat Kenton that week. Yeah. They were a little surprised. Yeah. And then so, you know, last week, the big win against Bath when you talked about teams, huge teams win. prepared yeah. to play in that weather. I don't know if there's anyone better than Ottawa Glandorf and what they, you know, what they want to do. And so this, yeah, this this one might get ugly. I remember after the first week or so, me, you and I talking, we're like, Coach Schreiner's a really good coach. What's going on over right. there, you know? And we couldn't figure it out. Man, they've really righted the wrongs, haven't they? Well, you got to look at this one as saying, Randy kind of intimated at it. They're running the football, ground and pound that OG likes to do. Bad news, Van Wert. You give up uh, almost uh, 300 yards per game. They, in fact, they gave up 308 last week. Bad formula there for um, Van Wert in this football game. Now, if they do have a shot, Briston Weiss, see what he did last week? I did. 207 yards rushing. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to be pretty good again. They turned the ball over too much. Minus 11 for uh, Van Wert on the year. I, I really think OG has a huge advantage. Briston Weiss. But yeah. special pregame, though, right? They got the tailgate going on. That's right. You and I get to yeah, do we the get tailgate. To, we get to do nice. some pregame tailgating. Yeah. And Van Wert's one of those teams that you just see them play and you just think, Oh, so close. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's a lot of near misses in their execution and their offense. I, I called one of their games a few weeks ago when they played Wapak, and it was really one of those scenarios where you felt like, man, if they were just a hair quicker here, if they were just a step better here, they just didn't miss these connections. The the com the complexion of that game against Wapak would have been different. Well, Wapak still would have won the game because top to bottom, they're just better than Van Wert this year. But I think that's where Van Wert is really struggling, and I think when you're missing those pieces and when you haven't brought that stuff together yet and coach Keith Recker is a phenomenal coach, a state champion winning coach. So it's just taking time to bring those things together. Van Wert's going to struggle to find wins the rest of the season. Whereas OG, I think has settled into that middle of the WBL tier that I think maybe a lot Going of us the saw future. them there. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and we'll build upon that in the future. But I think OG probably got a pretty good lock at finishing I mean, they've got two two more winnable games. I think five and five is not out of the reach for OG this year. I, I pulled up. I wanted to, to make the same point Patrick just did, but you're home with Salina, which I mean, we've all have we all seen Salina. Right. That's a very that's, winnable that's game. A winnable it is game. a winnable game. Yeah. 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 Then, then nice you're job. at Shawnee. That's a winnable that's game. A winnable and then game. you're at Defiance, and Defiance is good, but. Uh, I've spent some time working at Defiance. Defiance OG is one of those That's a great weird rivalry yeah. wild yeah. card game. Yeah. One team can be eight and one. One team can be one and eight. I mean, we we almost saw that last year. We did, and, and you just you never know what'll happen. So there, I mean. What this win against Bath did for OG last week might just springboard them, and th there's a possibility they could run the table the second half yeah. of the season. Briston Weiss has a week where he goes 207 on the ground, and uh, oh by the way, Trenton Brazen went for 308. You know, so right, you'd be talking unbelievable. About that. Right? That's, I mean, right. That, that, those numbers are, are mind-boggling. 207 yards out of one kid. That's and you look at that game last week, OG and Bath, and on paper you're like, okay, well we'll, we'll find out who Bath is, and I don't know if we did. But I don't think we're who we. Yeah, that was a head scratch. Thought we were, yeah. Because yeah. I think you looked at it and went, okay, this is this is an opportunity for Bath to kind of, all right, this is for real. We're taking our next steps. We're going to be because up until you know as as recently as I think week four, Bath was in the WBL championship race. They were, which mm -hmm. usually they're out of it after week one. So this was improvement for them regardless. But seeing OG lay a twenty six burger on them, mm -hmm. just like oh, I, I, well. I, 
OG might be a little better, and maybe Bath is not quite as good as we thought they were. You can make an argument that the weather affected Bath more than anybody in the area, right? Sure. They have to outscore people. They struggle defensively. And OG, you know, that was their type of football game. Let's just run the ball, and we're going to play good defense right. against a team that can't throw. Randy and I have seen Bath a couple times, highly explosive. <laughs> But uh, wet football is a different animal. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, defense is one of those things you do to give some of your offensive guys a break. Like, all right, we'll, we'll play it for a couple <laughs> plays. Okay, yeah, all right. Oh, offense, all right, let's, let's send our best 11 out there. <laughs> all right, guys, game two. Uh, Mark Shine and Jerry Snodgrass will be on the call for this one. Coldwater goes to Delphi St. John's. Coldwater is the beast. I've said it before. If Marion Local were not in existence, Coldwater would be the king of the MAC right now over the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Look, they're 6 and 0. Delva St. John's is 2 and 4. Delva St. John's defensively, they've had games where they've given up 71 points, 54 points and 34 points. This is not a good week to be playing cold water. What's is your there, thoughts? Is yeah. there a good week to no, play? No, I was going to say, well if you're marrying local. Yeah, there if you're marrying local there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, afraid. Yeah. Yeah. So, Delva St. John's also um Drew Boggs, their quarterback, he left last week against Anna uh through the middle of the first half. Don't know if he'll be back. Uh Christian Young, the sophomore that came in and played quarterback, has a nice future. Um, not ready to be a full-time varsity starting quarterback yet, but what sophomore is, right? Um, to make it, things even worse, not only is Boggs out, but T.J. Wirtz, their tremendous running back, he did not play. And then um, uh, Logan Duncan left the game also. So those are three really key players for Delphi St. John's. If I'm t- Todd Schulte, I'm saying, guys, we're going to let you sit out this week also so you're healthy for the end of the season because even if they do play, they're not beating cold water on that day. Uh, cold water is just going to keep rolling on this one. It is a great cold water team. Pot Cotter, they can hand it to him all day long, and they're going to beat Delphi St. John's. I'll ask you this, Randy. Is, yep. is this the year cold water gets over the hump? You know, they're really it, good. It, it kind of looks that way. Their, their defense looks like might not be the big dominating defense that we've seen before. And it seems like, and we saw it a couple years ago, Injuries always seem to strike them at the absolute worst time. Yeah, Marcel Blazing game last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, and so you never know with them. But, uh, yeah, I um, – And I say over the hump, look, beating Marion Lo- – that game last week, Marion Local for Sales, we were all excited talking about it last week on the podcast. Oh, it's going to be a great game. It's 48 nothing. That was a, that was a <laughs> halftime score that when you looked at your phone, like, whoa, yeah. what in the world? Yeah. Well, I, I remember the, the beginning of the year – Marion Local played that team in Indiana that no one knew anything about. And yeah, I know yeah. Mark Mark Shine was talking to you guys and like, well, we just don't know what we're going to get. They're this highly ranked 6A and, yeah, 42 to 6 at the half or whatever. Yeah. And Dan- so. Danny, I do have a way that St. John's might be able to stay in this football game. I was going to ask Patrick what he thought if there was any chance they could, but if you got away. Go oh, okay. Go ahead. So Delphi is, is being inundated with gnats. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> You get all the gnats, you get them on the field, you yes. pile them up, you put them in front of that cold water offense, and they're just bugging them. That's it. I, so, I did the game last year, last week over there, uh, Delphi St. John's and uh, Anna with Kelsey Beimer. Folks, I'm that, telling you, the, the amount of gnats that are over there right now, if you're going to the game, you buy as much bug spray as you can get, man. It's so unbelievable. you're saying St. John's has got a shot. <laughs> <laughs> they can bug them. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So Egyptian plague aside. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how about Saint, locusts? How maybe so. John. Oh, so the all the firstborn are dead. All right. Well, that's that's dark. <laughs> um, look, a lot of us don't remember. It hasn't been that long ago that St. John's actually put up a pretty stout effort against Coldwater. Coldwater only beat this team by seven points a couple of years ago. And again, I know that's enough time. It's different kids. It's a different squad. And, and I recognize that. But it's very easy for us to just look at Coldwater and go, well, they've, they've just rolled everybody for a decade. And why is this going to be any different? And the odds are that this is probably going to be another blowout win. But St. John's, 
Uh, for them, it's going to come down to can they match up at all with this team? In high school sports, it always comes down to can I physically match up with these guys? Can I not make mistakes? And in this case of St. John's, I don't know if they match up that well. Um, they matched up really well against, say, Lima Central Catholic. They only lost two by one point. But you look at the rest of the Blue Jays' uh, record. They, they beat Fort Recovery, who's had their own struggles. But you, what, what's a similar opponent to Coldwater? Probably Marion Local. Sure. How did they do? Well, they lost 71 nothing. So don't be surprised if this one gets out of hand pretty early on behalf of Coldwater. Completely agree. Guy game, guys, game three. Patrick Yu and Dar Nevergal will be on the call for this one. Pandora Gilboa at Liberty Bend. Both of these squads are undefeated in the BBC. We know what Liberty Benton can do offensively. They've got some D1 talent on the boundaries. Mm-hmm. Seth Alker, he's yeah. a fantastic player. Pandora Gilboa, you know, they're doing okay from where they started. Really got beat up a lot there by Columbus Grove in the home opener. You and I had that game, but have bounced back nicely. Well, everybody looks bad against Grove, though, I right? Know, right? You, yeah. you, you and I had that game on 93 on the fan. What a job Matt Hershey has done, mm-hmm. uh, that 0 and 2 start. And, and that's coaching, right? Because that week one, Danny, we saw them, they threw the ball all around the field, right? They, yeah. they threw way too much at Corey Girton, uh, uh, the quarterback that was returning. Well, they've changed their formula. You look at last week, Andrew Miller, the running back, who you and I absolutely loved. I love in, Andrew Miller. In, in, in week one, except he, he, for. He's a physical player. He's really a physical. real physical player, yeah. but they didn't give it the ball to him until the second half that day, yeah. right? Well, that's not the case anymore. 23 carries, 145 yards last week against Elmwood, and then Ben Burkholder, they're arguably their second toughest kid, right? Three catches for 70 yards. Their backfield's solid. It's it, really it, solid. It's very yeah. solid. I think if those two guys touch the ball 35 to 40 times, that's how they stay in this football game because Liberty Benton's very explosive. Randy, I think you'd agree this has to be a short possession type football game from the win. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm a Pandora Gilboa, who put this schedule together? Grove and Bluffton? Your first two yeah. games of the year, like what are? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I understand that you, right? You're going to Ric Flair it, and to be the best, you got to beat the best. But <laughs> Woo! Uh, there we go. Yeah, but that is <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's yeah. I was going to chop you, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick. You're and then on, and then divorce you for the third time, <laughs> Patrick. You're on the call for this one. Uh, have you seen either of these two teams play this year? Uh, Miles and I got the chance to see Pandora play uh, week one, um, and I know that Randy and he have seen Liberty Benton play. No, I haven't seen either of these teams play yet. Uh, obviously, I've heard a lot of good things, and I think I've seen a little bit from uh, different broadcasts. And for Pandora Gilboa, this is going to be one of these uh, show it games. You know, it's a great one of the one of the things that the Rockets have, what I've noticed over the last couple of years, and you could probably say this about any football team, but it seems like the injury bug hits Pandora Gilboa pretty hard and this is about the time of year that it hits them because I was actually working with the team a couple of years ago and they were literally the walking wounded heading into a game I think it was against Liberty Benton because uh, I've been around this time and they felt really good about their chances but they just didn't have the the manpower to to match up with Liberty Benton and I think I don't know about the injuries so much this year I think PG comes in relatively healthy uh, as healthy as anyone is after six weeks of playing football but Liberty Benton just has a, a lot of weapons their quarterback is the only one of two quarterbacks in the BBC it's over a thousand yards passing um in Trevin Lieb so I think it's it's going to be a hard uphill battle for PG. An opportunity, though, for them to make a statement in the BBC. I, I don't know if they will. I, I like Liberty Benton in this game. I'm going to call it down the middle, of course, I'm not really <laughs> rooting for anybody. But I have to agree with you. That, I mean, do you, again, you know, starting off with Grove and, and with Bluffton. And, again, you don't really know how tough that game is going to be until you look back on it. But to right. look at that and go, oh, well, you only lost – you know, they only lost 77 to 7 combined against those two teams. <laughs> so I don't know what that it's, says about It's a you mindset yet. thing, though, right? Because, you know, they're, how Miles has coached the sport for who knows how long. You do that the first two. If you got 40 kids playing, how after those two games, how many are you going to have back? Yeah. Because you're not going to have all 40. You, want, you just want to survive them. Right? Yeah, you're not yeah. going to. Yeah. So how many did you lose, you know, how, mentally? And physically, you know, how many are, are with it. So it's. But don't forget, PG had beaten Columbus Grove the year, the year before. before. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, Randy, how does Pandora Gilboa stop Seth Elkert, the, the great receiver that's going to your beloved UT Rockets? Do um, they have any shot of doing that? They're going to play one guy on top of another. So they're going to make like a mega defensive oh, and a big back. Trench yeah. Game. And there yeah. we go. So, yeah, yeah that, that's the thing, right? Yeah, if, this is, if this is a 30 plus point game, you got to like Liberty Benton's chances. Well, and when you have a player like that who 
who's clearly a Division One standout, or you know, a kid that's going to play in the MAC. He's going to be head and shoulders usually against the, a, the, the college MAC. It's not like yeah, yeah, not yeah. Like the cold college MAC. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. some teams that would beat the other <laughs> MAC in that Which, MAC. You know, you just you, you do you do the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do the best. He, I was uh, I was going to say it, and Patrick beat me to it. You do the best of not letting him beat you. So you know, he is you know, clearly their best player. Akron too. Don't want to just state that Liberty Benton is just an offensive team. Uh, two tremendous linebackers and Zach Elker and Kohler and uh, the defensive lineman who we saw play against um, Ottawa Glandorf. Is it Barbara or, Bar- or Barbara? Barbara. Barbara. Yeah. He was yeah, outstanding. We couldn't stop in the making Hanna Barbera jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And the Eagles. <laughs> yabba dabba <laughs> do. <laughs> that might have come right. up once or That's twice. Okay. Well, let me put my feet down and put the brakes on this. Um, <laughs> That's good. That's Thank good. you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just yeah. through the past all bam. Of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. bam. <laughs> There's there are so many weapons that Liberty Benton can throw at you and so many different guys that are capable of scoring. And that's not something that you have a lot of at this level. And that's something that Pandora Gilboa is going to have to adjust to. Can they? I don't know. We'll see what happens when when Friday hits, but they just have that talent, and the other guys are scoring points. you got the Elkerts. Uh, Garrett Nealis is in the top ten in scoring in the BBC. That's three Liberty Benton guys that can put the ball in the end zone, and that's that's going to be a lot to handle. So the Rockets have their hands full, no doubt, coming up on Friday. Take nothing away from Pandora Gilboa, but the, the Liberty Benton is the type of team that historically PG has struggled against. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Game four, guys, myself and the great one. Darren Gilbert will be on the call Friday night. Toledo Rogers at Lima Senior. Guys, I know you know what I'm talking about. Lima Senior right now is putting up, and I'm not kidding you when I say this, they are putting up historical numbers. Janias Hall is the number one quarterback on max prep and yardage right now in the, not in the state, in the country. Guys, listen to these stats last week. Janias Hall was 21 of 34, 472 yards, eight touchdowns. Guys, do you remember what the weather conditions were last Friday night yeah. were? They were horrid, and he threw for someone, eight Someone touchdowns. built a dome? What yeah, we? right. Uh, Boog Wilson, five receptions, 165 yards, and three touchdowns. Keon Smith's three receptions, 129 yards, two touchdowns. And Khalil Wash, six receptions, 111 yards, two touchdowns. Guys, it's supposed to be 75 and sunny Friday night. Bad news for Rodgers. Ba- really bad news for Rodgers. Yeah, they, they want all that rain they can get. 56 yeah. points in that storm and wind that we had last week. Highly impressive. We we have Bill Lawrence on the podcast. Yes. We've had him on the radio show. And he just flat out said, we don't, we don't let weather bother us. Well, if it's that easy, just say it. <laughs> it, should, it certainly worked for them. I, I, have, it's only I have never talked to a high school football coach that was more matter-of-factly than Coach Lawrence from Lima Senior. He looked at Miles and I, and he told us, he said, yeah, we soak the footballs. We practice in the rain. Nothing's gonna. We're not changing how we do things. Our goal every Friday night is 70. And he goes, I'm not putting up 70 to embarrass you. That's just our goal. And I, and I asked him, the week before they had scored like 53, and I said, were you upset? And he goes, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, wow. And, and it, but he did explain some of the things that they're working on. I mean, they are going after perfection, guys. This team is loaded. They really are. This is a 2-4 and four Rodgers team. Don't forget, they, they, Elida had beaten them in week one. I, I was starting to believe a little bit about Rodgers. I saw them on uh, some TV when they played Woodward, but then I realized, you know, Woodward's making a lot of people look really good. They scored uh, 46 points against Toledo Waite, um, 58 of their own against Woodward. But then they lost a Toledo start 34-14. to So I think it's going to be a really tough ask for Rodgers to uh, go to Lima Senior and get a win. Yeah, especially when start looks like probably the second best team yeah. behind yeah. senior in the yeah. city league, and 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 Miles. And there's a big re- drop off. Yeah, oh, there is. Yeah, yeah, and Miles yeah. will remember this is the, the I guess the the two guys closest to Toledo. will talk for a minute. Remember when Woodward got the win last year, and everyone started to believe they turned the corner. Yeah, blah, blah, absolutely. Blah. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. That corner curve. Kind of, yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Christian but, Coolard's not walking but, through that but, door. But by golly, they all have nice stadiums now. So yeah. blue turf. Yeah. And you know that's the thing with Lima Senior is. Look, you look at the remaining schedule that they have in the Toledo City League, and this team's probably going to finish 10-0 and unless something happens drastically. Lima Senior is going to have a 10-0 and perfect season, and we're still not going to know if they're that good of a football team. Yeah, we, we, because – go yeah, ahead. No, no, we, we do it every week when we do our Power Five. No one at this table has ever put them in their top five. They keep them on the outside because we all have those questions. And they're not mine. They're not yeah, mine. right. Yep. We all have those questions. That is a great point that we – yeah, we think – I said it earlier, they're, they're loaded, but are they loaded against 
Massel and Washington? Are they loaded against St. Ignatius? Are they loaded against, you know, Elder? There's a lot of what ifs about this team. Yeah. And th- again, the competition, you know, we, we were we were just banging on PG here earlier for facing a couple of six and O teams to start off the season. <laughs> The Toledo City League is and and wasn't ever going to present a lot of issues for Lima Senior. Their toughest competition was probably going to be in the Finley game, and I think that was the closest game I think that Lima Seniors had this year. I think it was a four point win for the Spartans uh, without Ryan Montgomery. Yeah, without Ryan Montgomery. So, yeah, Lima's going to have a, a, a perfect season. I don't know when the last time was they had a perfect season, and they're probably going to get a home game. They'll face whoever in. in uh, at Lima Stadium, and we still won't know if they're that good of a football team. Maybe even after that, I mean, if they're playing, you know, Piqua right now has the 16 seed in that region. So Piqua is two and four right now. I would say Piqua is probably a win for Lima Senior. No, I would assume, yeah, I would yeah so they have uh, Fantastic 50 right now has Lima Senior projected a six seed. That's where they are now. Yeah, that's that. That's where they have them behind. Three teams projected to finish eight and two. Who, so who are those teams, Randy? Uh, the eight and two teams. You'd have Mount Healthy, Harrison, and uh, Kings Mill Kings. All in the Cincinnati area, right? Yeah, because that's yeah. where senior, senior yeah. goes south, right there in yeah. what uh, eight? Yeah, Division two, Region eight. So you'd be looking at. I'm trying to let me scroll down. A Troy, a Trotwood, Madison. Oh, uh, we throw in the opening round. And, and guys, let's yeah. make it real clear. We're not knocking on Lima Senior. This no, is more no, of an no, indictment no. on the Toledo yeah, League. Is, right. And this is something as as someone, again, uh, Miles and I, just because of the nature of where, where we live, where yeah, we've grown right. up, what you know, the, where we covered. This was more when, – when this was made for, you know, Senior needed to go somewhere – I still someone will have to explain to me why they can't end up in the WBL. I'll never we talk about that all the time. I'll I'll yeah. never understand. That's just my lack of knowledge of of the WBL. But this was the the the, the play and take I mean the the Toledo public bless their hearts they try hard as they might like their their basketball thirty years ago. Oh, it was really good. Some of the best you'll see around. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate it won't be like that anymore, and it, the, the the what happened with the private schools and and there you know the whole COVID thing the private schools get to play the public schools don't blah 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 mm-hmm. believe what you will about it but this was more of the city league needed someone to elevate their level of play and and i know they won't do it you know senior won't do it across the board for all the sports but it's going to help football but yeah it's going to be you know we we see that the nwoal this year with liberty center who knows liberty center is going to beat every team in the league by 60 points do we know if they're good right it, right, it's, right. Yeah, yeah. it's another question right, right? you it's, won't know until they get to yeah the and then so it's the same thing with senior yeah we're gonna take nothing i i mean not knocking senior i, I listen to bill lawrence with you yeah. guys and he's excited that they're gonna go play they're gonna go win and, and, and it's excited. gonna yes. right so, yeah, yeah. So they want to go deep yeah and so i just it's one of those things yeah we just don't know yeah make no mistake i'm not knocking lima senior at all in fact it's better for the area in general when Lima Senior is good at football because point. nobody yeah. likes a black hole in the middle of Allen County where all football goes to die. Yeah. And Lima Senior's had some pretty rough seasons over the last 10 or so. And now they're having some success and now they're having a good season and we are all for it. The only question that we're bringing up is once it gets to the postseason, what kind of team are they are they going to be? And, and that question will be answered soon enough. But uh, again, it, it's it's measured optimism on this side of the table, and I think all around the table, it's like, okay, the Spartans, they're going to put together a great season, probably ending up at a sixth seed, at least has a projection. They'll get a home game. So we'll see. We'll they, see what happens. They're going to dominate the TCAL forever, and they'll finally lose, yes. but it'll be one of those after 35 consecutive <laughs> yeah. wins yeah, in the great. TCAL. And, it, and it's going to be <laughs> – we're going to need weather like we had last Friday. It's yeah. not – I mean, there's – you know, I know Rogers has made their runs for a while, but that was you know under Rick Long Rios in the early 2000s. Well, no, this start looked like yeah. they turned the corner, and then they kind of fell off the map. And, and, and you're right; they are going to dominate that league for a long time. We talked to Coach Lawrence the other day, and he talked about the JV Spartans are undefeated, the freshmen are undefeated, and the junior highs are undefeated. So, you know, yeah, they're going to take the, the T Cal and never give it back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, and and, and I quite don't, honestly, they should. Nobody has that type of enrollment yep. in the, in the TCAL like them. 
Guys, game five, Evan Skilleter and Dave Bowen bluffed in at Crestview that crafty Nick Fraley. He put a bluffed in pirate and Evan Skilleter and a Crestview Knight, Dave Bowen, in the booth together. Mayhem ensues. Can I just watch the announcer <laughs> cam of the two of them going at it for Breaking an hour? Breaking news. Right? Both of them have agreed to be in the mascot outfit oh, while nice. they broadcast this nice. one. So that's going to be a lot of fun, nice. isn't it? I can't wait to see Evan Skilleter with a swashbuckling pirate hat. <laughs> Arr, <matey. laughs> Guys, look, everybody knows bluffed in and Columbus Grove, Northwest Conference. It's a collision course. Um, Crestview, it's at Crestview, and Crestview, a good program, having a down year this year, but there's always a game or two every year where Crestview surprises you. Is this the week, Miles? Well, Braxton Leith is back, so yeah, they, yeah. they got a shot, and you know everybody still talks about Bryson Penix being out. Is he going to play this week for Crestview? But Huxley Gross has done a nice job. Six touchdowns and only one interception. Um, so I would say they have an opportunity, Danny. However... Watch out. Bluffton is just oh, so machine. fast, aren't they? We talk all about uh, Trenton Barraza and what a great player he is. Boy, this league is just loaded. How about Landon Worcester? He could be the player of the league again, He's right? Fantastic. Yeah, 8.5 yards per carry. They only give it to him 28 times. Hey, Bluffton, give it to him a little bit more, right? Yeah. That's well, running goes. clocks in second half. He's not needed. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get to play the third and fourth quarter ever. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance, Randy, that uh, uh, you? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, no, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I could. Patrick, you've got a better argument than that. Right? <laughs> I was trying. I was, I'm trying to formulate one. And God bless it. I love you your know, honesty, though. We have a lot of people listening from Crestview. The thing is, like, <laughs> Di- Diamond Dave's going to hear this, and I know I'm going to get a text from him when oh, after he yeah. listens going, I'll never say it publicly, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Save that sound bite. Wait. <laughs> is your Dave Bowen impression basically Eeyore? <laughs> Pretty much. A Crestview yeah, Eeyore so. night. <laughs> Where the poop? Well, oh, bother. So it's actually I the guess guy we're that we get saw our butts right kicked. now. It's the, it's the old man we saw at the Crestview game. That's not really Dave Bowen. It's Miles' biggest fan. Crestview might come in with a lot of emotion, and if there's a team that's ready for a letdown, maybe Bluffton after a huge win over LCC last week, right? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm making a, a, word. I'm making a, a word. case, Dave. I'm no. making a case. Well, uh, I, I've seen I've seen plenty of games involving Crestview that I thought were going to go one way or be a blowout, whether it was on Crestview's side or against Crestview, that ended up being a lot tighter than maybe they were supposed to be. Uh, that's not to say that this one is going to be one of those situations, but uh, for Bluff, really for both these teams, this is kind of a a playoff preview type of matchup because both these teams are in region 22 they're both in kind of the area where they could possibly face each other although if it would be a playoff game it would be in bluffton and uh, that might add a little bit something to it along with the just it's it's in conference it's an nwc game Um, but it's really one of those where bluffton hasn't really demonstrated that there's a lot of chinks in the armor that Crestview has the ability to exploit. That's kind of what it comes down to in this one. And Crestview might be able to pull off a couple plays, but I think it's it's just too much pirate too often. And this is going to be, I don't say an easy Bluffton win, but I think Bluffton's going to move to 7-0 and after gonna, this game. Going to pillage them. By the way, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's Grove after Bluffton for Crestview, too. Oh, all right. Good they job, got the reverse boys. PG <laughs> schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, game, Northwest Conference yeah. Commissioner, what are you thinking? <laughs> game six, gentlemen. Delphus Jefferson and LCC. Nate Garlock, Kelsey Beimer on the call for this one. Uh, look, LCC had high hopes going up to Bluffton last week. We had talked to uh, Carson Parker the week before, him and his dad, and they were excited about that game. Now, unfortunately, Matthew Quatman did not play. or it did be fl- snaps, Limited, yeah. very limited. Uh, they really got beat up, 35 nothing. Um this is a good bounce back week for them. Delvis Jefferson really down year, so mm-hmm. I like the birds in this one, Miles. Yeah, if you're Scott Palti, why even play Quatman in this one, right? Right, right. Just let him sit out again. You want to uh, get him healthy because when he's healthy, he's fantastic. Yeah, let, he is. Yeah. Let Brady Parker and Michael Quatman and uh, Flores take care of the offensive uh, firepower because I think you know you score two touchdowns, you're probably going to win this football game. This is a uh, Jefferson team that really struggles to score the football. Danny, their top three rushers have a total of a 171 yards rushing. I think Braza had that in the first half last week. He had that on two carries. Yeah, yeah. So (laughs) it it is a Delphus Jefferson team. They're working hard, but boy, there's just not a lot there right now. Yeah. 
I, I would never tell Scott Palti how to coach his football team. Of course, he knows way more about it than I do. But you have an opportunity, and I think a, a golden opportunity, to rest Quatman yeah. and develop some of your other playmakers. And that's something that I've noticed from LCC over the last few years is they've usually got pretty solid quarterback play, and then they've got one or two skill guys that end up doing most of the damage. And I've thought numerous times, man, if, if LCC just had another guy they could go to, whether it was a slot receiver or some other – playmaker that they could develop some of these games that have been close losses for them mm. particularly early in the season because they've had some losing streaks in the middle of the middle of the season I don't think those would have been as bad maybe they could have turned some of those into wins so I think there's an opportunity here again to get Myron Flores maybe more involved in the offense to get the other Quatman a little bit uh, more used to being a, a viable target out there I know he's been used uh, somewhat but uh, usually as a decoy more often than not so taking that opportunity against a Jefferson team that is down that that's Probably this is a game that's going to go running clock fairly early. That would be my guess, or by, by the beginning of the second half. And and take that opportunity because you've got Spencerville and then you've got Grove. So your schedule is not going to get uh, a ton easier after this game. So take advantage of it while you can. Yeah, yeah and there's a lot of a uh, lot of young guys that play for LCC. I right? forgive me. Their I don't, sophomore I don't class know. is yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of young guys that are trying to develop at LCC. So. Uh, is good, good opportunity, and yeah, go a little bit deeper in the roster, and it's one of those things that you know by if you put together a run, and you know, we've seen it. I think we've all sat here and talked about it. You never know who you're going to need week 13, 14, 15, and so these are the types of games that you kind of build some confidence and and get some reps because reps in, in a game are completely different, right, than practice reps. And yeah. so yeah, this will be good opportunity for LCC. Guys, there was a lot of complaining last week about the weather. There was a lot of opinions about games. Should they have been moved? What are your thoughts on bad weather games? Should they be moved? Patrick, we'll start with you since you're taking a drink. and I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Move to what? To a, to a day that doesn't have weather? Is there a day specifically that never has weather? Because I'd like to know what day that is. Cause I would Sunday at 9.30 a.m. To be able to do that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask you. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> hey, this is part of being turned up. Is this the A block? This is the A block. <laughs> Where's my story? This is my favorite, Patrick. <laughs> it's a, a lot of people's favorite, Patrick. <laughs> He's hangry. <laughs> just just none that, that answer to me. It's like, Patrick, can you tone down a little bit, please? <laughs> Look, alluding to what I talked about earlier. There is a small period of time where you can be in bad conditions. You can be playing a sport that you love or, or at least being forced to love by your parents. I don't know what your situation is. <laughs> I don't That's know what your situation dad is. Made me play. That's my favorite podcast line. <laughs> so the Holbrook kids are in here, aren't they? <laughs> you, you have this very limited time to where you can do this. So embrace it. I, I, I still have this image of I, I called Allen East game a couple years ago, and Keaton Lehman, who was a star wide receiver for them, takes the this, – this, it was in Bell Fountain, and this was the day when apparently no one in Bell Fountain knew how to clear snow off a field, so they just played in the snow. And he breaks away from the defense, does a somersault into the end zone, and then does a snow angel right there as he's celebrating a touchdown. Just pure joy. Joy. Yeah. Playing a football game. That was probably flagged. I, I think you're right. Yeah, it was flagged. Yeah, <laughs> I need to call Jim Epperly back. <laughs> so Jim, how do you flag that? <laughs> so the official didn't enjoy it, but everyone else <laughs> right, did. Right, right, pretty right. Pretty much. You signed your kid up to play a sport outdoors in Ohio in October and November. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you were getting yourself into when you signed up for this. If there's lightning and thunder, yeah, sure, don't play in that. Okay, I understand that. If it's going to rain, we have things called weather forecasts. There was a hurricane that came through. This didn't take anyone by a surprise. Prepare accordingly or don't go to the game or don't cry about it. Break out your galoshes. Yeah, Patrick right. Campbell. serious. Play in hurricanes. Yeah, That's right. all. I'm yeah. <laughs> We're talking about it on the radio. It was a low-level system by the time it got here. It was not a hurricane. I've lived through three hurricanes. I know what a hurricane, and sir, you are no hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Candler v. Jim Cantori. <laughs> Again, authorities are saying, don't go uh, out in this. I, I don't disagree with you, Patrick. I, no, if I'll the Thornies say, are saying don't go out in it, then they wouldn't have had football games. Yeah. As simple as that. They didn't say that. 
that's, you could play football. That's just my so go play favorite football. when they put the weather person out in it, right? Yeah. And, and oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. There's like, <laughs> authorities are saying, don't go out. Yeah. Don't be out here I, like I, me. I'll say this, and Miles and I get into this discussion all the time about dome stadiums and kind of that Danny, stuff. Danny's yeah. pro-dome, by I'm the way. I'm pro-dome. Now, but for the, for the pros, obviously you can't have it in high school. But I, I agree. Some, some tell that to yeah. Rossford. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. I've seen that facility. But if you want to put a dome up, put a dome up. Well, I mean, Amazon kind of Yeah, I'll say this. The only time I could see it affecting is lightning, right? I mean, that's 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 sure. it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. You know, put kids out there if we're going to go through a you know two hour lightning storm, but you know right. thunder, rain, wind, you got to play football. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's what you know. And I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. I know that there are some strong opinions by some people about that. You know, we're, we're we don't we don't understand. I get it, but the only thing I can see is lightning, right? Well, we heard a lot of athletic directors complain about it because what it do to their attendance. Right. Right. So maybe you move it to a. For I, that. Yeah. 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 I, but, it, you know, the, the one AD said they, they lost out on ten to eleven thousand dollars because their gate receipt was so but, low. But you saw the weather Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It never changed. When are you going to play that? Well, game? some schools uh, down south, if they see the weather that's going to be bad, they'll move it to a Thursday instead of a Friday. So you, you beat the weather by playing a, a day yeah, earlier. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But but to me, it, it, it's. It's the softness of America, right? We're, we're becoming so soft. The one opportunity that uh, you have to show that you're t- mentally tough and physically tough, you're going to take it away from a kid mm-hmm. because it's going to rain and people don't like getting wet. Uh, the best games I ever played in high school, the ones that are most memorable, playing in the elements, playing with your buddies, finding out a way to win a football game when you are only down to like three plays, right? You have all those plays on your play chart, but when it's rainy and nasty out, you have about four plays to three plays that you can actually execute and they know it you know it we saw a lot of what they do they ran the quarterback magoo the last six plays of the game everybody knew mm-hmm. that he was going to run the football yeah. and so did salina but alida found a way we're just going to be tougher than you don't take that away from the kids let them play in the elements the only time i can remember looking at miles and saying we shouldn't be playing is Very early on when we were paired together, we had a playoff game at Finley, and I want to say it was Antwerp and – was it Antwerp and LCC? Couldn't see the field because the snow. Yeah, the snow was coming in sideways. We had, like, 50-mile-an-hour wind, and, and like, we're in the booth, and we're – I mean, we're telling people, like, we would love to describe the action if we could see it. Like, we're going to hope for the best, and – that was the only time that, and, and that's, but again, I mean, everyone's yeah. memories of playoff football is watching weather like that. But you know, when it's raining, no, it's, you got to deal with it. Gilly and I had a game at Tiffin two years ago, Cleveland, Glenville, Van Wert. We couldn't see the field. You couldn't see the markers. You can see that the snow was coming in so Same bad. Same night, I believe. Yeah, you're right. And it was, it was really hard to, to, describe anything right. going on now fortunately it turned out to be a really good game but man the, the conditions were really but, bad you know you had guys on you know you're playing on on the 50 going you know one way and there were guys with shovels or there might even been a gator like sweeping the lines on the other side of the field hoping there wasn't a play coming at them just so you could see yard mark. i mean they were doing that the entire night they spent 23 minutes at halftime trying to clear the field. And that's the only time that, and again, like you guys said, but what what, what are you going to do? You gonna, that was a night Don Shula was mad because that convict came over and he cleared off the spot for, <laughs> for Ron Meyer to have the yeah. field goal kick for the Patriots. There's, <laughs> there, and there's something to be said, and, and, and I will make this argument, where if the field conditions are going to be deteriorated to a point to where – man, it's just going to – I mean, we can play football, but it's going to be just terrible football. Then I think a decision can be made at at that moment on whether we want to continue this. There was a – years ago when I was covering sports over the east side of the state, we had a pretty nasty rainstorm that came through, and I was covering New Philadelphia, and it was just grass field at that point in time, back when, you know, a lot of schools had grass fields. And the field from the 40 to the 40 just turned into a mud pit because – That's where the teams were. They couldn't move the ball, and the field just got destroyed. The grass got torn up. It was just a mud pit. New Philadelphia was supposed to host a playoff game that next week, 
and they were having to move that game because we, we can't host it in this. Mm. It's it's not it's a it's a hole now essentially in there. Um, so I'm I'm amenable to an argument that says, hey, look, the field conditions are just not going to be conducive to playing this game in its entirety. You know now fields are a lot better than they used to be. We don't have a lot of grass fields, and the grass fields we have seem to be a little more durable than they were back in the you know, 20th century when it was just... Yeah, I think... Well, throw some grass yeah. out and play. I think Kenton is the only WBL school that doesn't have turf. Does Defiance have turf? Elida. Yeah. Elida. 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 Yeah, yeah. So Elida and Kenton, I think, are the only two WBLs. So a lot of schools are going to that, too. Yeah. So there's a there's an argument to be made for that. But for... This is uncomfortable to me in. Suck it up. You know what you got yourself into. <laughs> I mean, yeah, was it kind of a, a pain in the butt because our window was open and our notes are getting wet? Yeah, but that's something like... We toughed it out, Randy. That's right. We're mentally tough. Right. Sit in that's that booth. Right. I'm proud of you, that's too. Right. And I had to sit next to Miles. Ugh. Oh, all right. Hang I on. I called a game in a snowstorm <laughs> in no press booth. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> all right, guys. Hang on, Sloopy. It's time to talk a little Buckeye chatter. I love starting this out with you, Miles. This is your baby. The good, the bad, the Buckeye. Uh, the good, uh, forcing turnovers. And it's a good thing Ohio State did, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially early in that football game. Uh, Latham Ransom again. It comes in and chops one out. A fantastic job by that defense. It is something that they have shown that they're proficient in this year. Remember mm -hmm. last year, they just uh, play defense and keep everything in front, but they are forcing turnovers this year. Uh, the bad, the Will Howard interception, um, I'm not talking about the actual interception. I'm talking about the one that should have been in the yeah. end zone. Yeah. Much different football game had Michigan State came down with that one. You cannot lock into a guy and a watch point. him come all the way across. That would have been two interceptions for Will Howard, very concerning, and it would have been a different football game. And the Buckeye, I know you guys are probably going to rave about uh, Jeremiah Smith, and rightfully so, but let me tell you about Caleb Downs. Uh, looked like an NFL starting safety um, on Saturday night. He was absolutely ridiculously good, and I think that's going to be Jim Knowles' answer moving forward when you talk about they're going to play teams that want to run the football, i.e. Iowa this week. Well, I think Caleb Downs is going to be very active in that box and uh, probably blitzing on rundowns to try to take away from that that stretch run that I would love so much. Yeah. Randy? So I, I saw on Facebook you got to uh, talk to Jim Knowles, Miles. Was that? Meeting him in person was something else last Saturday. Did, that was did, really he, cool. did he take to your ideas on defense? <laughs> My did. wife's got dinner ready, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on that long. <laughs> Uh, Randy, the good, the bad, the Buckeye. Uh, the the good was that um, I got to watch more of the game than I thought because I had I had to make a decision with my team. I, I really wanted to watch Alabama Georgia, and then it was thirty to seven, and I had it on my phone on Peacock, and I'm trying to watch my phone, watch the screen. All right, this isn't working, so made the switch, put Peacock on the TV. Then of course I'm getting alerts that. 30 to 7 turned into 33 yeah, right. 28 or whatever so um good to see ohio state just another banger of a team they're able to put away i hope they get to play someone someday and figure out if this is a good football team a little bit of a shot so huh? i get to all right yeah. no toledo on their schedule this year <laughs> we're no mississippi state either all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> ouch and the by, by the way have you guys seen the meme about like Ohio State and Toledo versus the Mac since two th or versus the SEC since two thousand three or whatever. Got a good record. Yeah, yeah two did. and three yeah. against one and five or whatever it is. So, all right, thanks, but, Randy. But, <laughs> by the way, I right, yeah. well, guess I won't be appearing on the show anymore. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. People cancel all the time. By, we'll call you. By, by the way. <laughs> You're going to get your Mike J.D. Vance yeah. if you keep no, it up there. By, <laughs> by the way, did anyone – I know I talked to Miles about this. Did you guys see that – and I don't want this to turn into the Toledo Hour, but the day after Toledo beat Mississippi State, the guy – donated eight million dollars to the mississippi state football program to fix it oh. <laughs> like, this will never happen again here is my check what a sec solution I was, I was right say, yeah. I was, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what i was gonna say what an sec way of doing <laughs> right. things because it uh, just means more well, well, apparently so I'm i didn't I, you know, <laughs> I didn't get to see a lot of it yeah there's a freshman receiver that apparently is really good which i know that could be any number of people for ohio state but um, I I kind of look at this Iowa or I I was at Iowa State, Iowa I think is slightly better than people think. They are. And my only concern is that you've got 
a big game with Oregon coming up the week after. Maybe trap game, he says with a question mark. Yeah. That's my only, I, I, only I would, real concern. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you if it were in Iowa City. But it being in Columbus, I, I just look at the athletes on both sides of the ball and, and the guys, the skill position players. But I'll talk about that later. Patrick, the good, the bad, the Buckeye. Uh, well, you know, I was encouraged that because Michigan State has always been kind of a sticky wicket for Ohio State, especially over the last, you know, 20 odd years. It seems like there's always a, a, a trap laid, whether it's in East Lansing or whether it's in Columbus, there's just a propensity for Michigan State to kind of uh, ruin Ohio State's national championship chances. And I'm so glad that a College Game Day took the opportunity to point that out while uh, Nick Saban was on there on the panel. Always, <laughs> you know what? They should have moved thrilled. that game in 2015. It got rain that night. We should have moved That's it, played right. it on a different day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Field goal be kicked that night. Should have played it. Zeke. Should have played it inside Value City. City Arena where there's a dome. That's yeah. right. We don't win much there. <laughs> that's that's a fair point too. But um, you know, glad that we were able to get past Michigan State and get past handily. You know, every once in a while you have to that first conference game always seems like it can be trouble. It was sometimes trouble in the Urban Meyer era. Just glad to see that they're past that. Uh, the bad I I am a little concerned about my boy Sonny Styles. Um, I don't I don't like his progression at linebacker. I was expecting to see more for him from him. He's a Pickerington grad. I, I was in Pickerington for a little bit, so Pickerington Central, I guess, but I still call it Pickerington. Um, so I was hoping he would develop a little bit faster, a little bit more than what he is. It's a position change, though. It is a position yeah. change, but a lot of what he did well, I'm not seeing that translate into the new position. It's almost like he's... I don't know. Maybe there's too much in his head. Maybe he's overthinking the position. Maybe there's a lot of that stuff's going on. Uh, but I'd like to see him play with that, with that freedom, with that energy, with that passion that I saw him play with at Pickerington. And I've seen him play different times as a Buckeye. So I, I, I need to see him get, get back to that. And um, the Buckeye, I don't know what that means. What does that The guy. The guy. The guy. The guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, it, it's got to be Jeremiah Smith. I mean, you make two ridiculous one-handed catches on the same drive, and you, you kind of have to have that moniker. So, yeah. and I'm I'm hoping he stays around Ohio State for a while because at some point the well's going to run dry. We can't keep getting these five-star wide receivers. We got to win a national championship. I, we got to we got to close the deal on some I, of these I things. I told Miles today on the radio show that you can bank on this. Jeremiah Smith is going to continue to play like he's playing, and next year we're going to have to outbid somebody to keep him. I mean, that's just the way the, the college football landscape is. Don't tell me somebody's not going to throw five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars at this kid. We're seeing people oh, he, walk out the door every day. Player. Yeah, I think yeah. you're. I think I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. And Matthew Sluka probably isn't going to be a wide receiver. Well, we'll get him to replace him. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have him back up. Yeah. Uh, Come on, hang Aaron on, Nolan. Sluka. Hang on, Sluka would be big. Yeah. Hang on, Sluka. Speaking of Jeremiah, well, he didn't Smith, do it. Yeah. He uh, he's my good for this week. Uh, yeah, he's. I don't know that we've seen anything like this. Uh, you know, years ago we saw uh, Marvin Harrison at the end of his freshman year have the big game in the Rose Bowl. Right. Remember? And then, yeah, and then Jackson Smith and Jigba, about middle of his sophomore year, were like, that kid's pretty good. Remember Chris Olave, the Michigan game, his freshman year, caught Towards two passes, and we're like, wow, it took him a while, but, man, he's going to be good. Jeremiah Smith from day one, we're like, holy moly, how good is he? Yeah. The progression is it, it's just going to be a meteor rise, and, I, and he, if he keeps his head on straight, he's he's going to be the best player in college football. It's either him or Ryan Williams, and we're seeing just both of them just dominate. They're 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 NFL ready, and Jeremiah Smith is NFL body ready. I mean, he is a big kid, and uh, I, I you know I I hope he stays. You, and, and to borrow a point from Randy Rocket over here, um, I want to see him do that against better defenses too. Yeah. I want to yeah. see him make those kind of plays against teams that have really solid defenses. He, he said I made a good point. He said, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we didn't recognize that. <laughs> the chair recognizes Randy. <laughs> I thought I said I borrowed your point. <laughs> um, now, if only, and this isn't a knock, but um, can you get like an NFL-ready quarterback to go with your NFL? I mean, no offense to Will Howard, but offense well, that taken. sounds a little. <laughs> <you> <laughs> get, it is kind of offensive, can you, Randy. Can you get like an NFL? Uh, I, I don't see. I mean, listen. You can't just say with all due respect and then say whatever you want. I love <laughs> I love Brock Purdy more than the next guy, but I'll um, say this, Randy. I'll say this. Is there? Uh, I'm I'm really 
Like, Will Howard's not going to be lighting up NFL defenses. Is, I don't care what he does in the NFL. He's well, an absolute well, no, he's upgrade. Play yeah. fullback, he's but. an absolute upgrade from what we had last oh, year. Without he a has doubt. three rushing touchdowns this year. Are you year. kidding me? Have you seen what Syracuse now, has now done listen, on offense this year? It's the ACC, Randy. Relax. They're three and one, and may or may not beat yeah. UNLV Friday night. Uh, <laughs> that's a great point. Will Howard has three rushing touchdowns in 21, 22, 23, and twenty-four. We had one rushing touchdown from the quarterback position. He doesn't score another touchdown all year. It doesn't matter. He's still the king. All right. He is Craig Krenzel with speed. You, you don't uh, want he, Kyle McCord again, coming again, back. which goes back to my point. Can we get an NFL ready quarterback? Well, it, it, listen, I understand he played yeah. for the Bengals. <laughs> Your NFL quarterback, he lives in Bell Found. He'll be I there know, next he's year. He's yeah. coming. I know. Yeah, he's a good one. Yeah. Uh, the bad for me, guys, uh, is the slow starts. Uh, I know we're winning these games, but the slow starts kind of concern me. Um, when we do play Oregon, <laughs> when we do play Michigan, when we do play Penn State, those slow starts. Y- y- no, <laughs> don't. You know, yeah. come on. You know, come out swinging. Uh, but the Buckeye for me, and I'm going to take off of the slow start, is the consistency. I-, I like the makeup of this team. I like the chip on their shoulder right now. I like the fact that they do slow. They- it's a slow start, but they don't give up many points. And I know we're not playing anybody. I- I'm not going to dispute that with you, Randy. We're not playing that great of teams, but you're going to see a whole different ball game this week. I don't think – I think you're going to see a 28-20, 28-17 uh, kind of game. Iowa won't be able to score with you, but I don't know that we're going to pile up Not what the odds Iowa. makers are saying. Yeah, yeah what is it, what's the line? 19 and a half last night. It's half. Vegas, no. Yeah. Except for the right line every single week. Or? Yeah, besides that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That city was built on losers. I've given them my money. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, let's talk about it. Gray unis versus Iowa. I don't like them. Miles likes them. Oh, I love the gray uniforms. You know yeah. why I like them? Because they're not the Penn State JT Barrett gray uniforms that oh, they wore. Those yeah. were hideous, those weren't were they? Hideous, yeah. yeah, I really like these gray uniforms. I want to go all scarlet, and they won't do it. I, I, they did it once. Remember yeah. against Penn State with the yeah. scarlet pants? That was yeah. fantastic look. But, yeah, yeah. yeah I like the grays. I'm, I have a jersey. Randy's got that disdain look on his face. I'm, like I'm a traditionalist. You've got, you got a home jersey. you got an away jersey. And... Let's stick with them," said the guy whose alma mater wore I was gonna highlight say, yellow. Yeah. I was going to say it. Highlight <laughs> yellow. You like the gray, Patrick? You like the black unis? I like the all black unis. I, I'm not a fan usually of the color rush aspect of it, which is we all wear the same color. Sure. I, I don't like those across the board, no matter who does them. I'm just really not a fan of it. Um, I don't mind the the gray, but something else needs to be a different color. I did like the black um, the black tops. I think we did one year. Um, I thought those were I thought those were kind of cool, but didn't we play? Didn't we go all black against Virginia Tech? Braxton Miller, remember? No, 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 that was not. I, no. no, maybe not. Oh well. So great, great tops. I, I, I mean, I think the great tops look look nice, but something else needs to happen with the with the pants. Just as long as you don't. You guys had the, uh, and I don't remember how long it was. You guys put the numbers on in black on the sleeve. Was that the a, 1968 national championship that, uniform? That, yeah. yeah, that yeah. was warm you, again. You, said you guys, you guys, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. that. Patrick, <laughs> does it bother that you that it, it's gray and then the uh, opponent's wearing white? Uh, is that enough of a uh, a difference between the two teams? Yeah, I think so. Is it? I, okay. I, yeah. The black helmets for Iowa give it away. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, yeah, you could you could look at it as this is a before Technicolor matchup where everyone just kind of looks the same. We're but. still in Kansas. We haven't made it to the Oz. <laughs> right. Yeah. We haven't discovered color yet. We haven't put those rods and cones in. So mm. this is how it sounded back in this time when everyone who talked on the radio sounded like this. That, yeah. Miles, this is a 3.30 start Ugh, time. It's um, the worst. Here's, <laughs> besides the 3.30 start time, which I don't like. We've no, talked about this. I'm a, I'm a late night guy, 7 yes. o'clock start. Here's the thing. I'm glad we're playing in Columbus because I don't like playing at Iowa City because when we beat them 58-0, we have to remember they wave to the sick kids. And I feel terrible taking that beautiful day away from those little kids in the hospital when they wave at them. So I'm glad I, we're playing in Columbus. I think they use that as an advantage. They do. Yes, yeah, they do. It's yeah. tough to think about being physical and violent. <laughs> When you're not the waving pink the kids. locker rooms, it's not the. It's. The, I think they got rid of the pink locker the, rooms. It's you know, the kids. Hayden Fry was a genius. I don't think little six-year-old Maria's main issue is whether or not the Hawkeyes <laughs> yeah, are doing well in the first quarter. Right. 
I really don't think that's an issue. Yeah. I don't You're think she's there. Nothing. You don't have time to wave to me right now. Kirk Ferentz got another contract? Are you kidding me? I don't think she's I hooked up to the leaving. chemo machine going, McNamara, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Good point. Yeah. Well, okay, but let's go back to the start time, you guys. Do you like the 3.30 oh, yeah. start times? 7.30, 7 o'clock. Yes, yeah. love that. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where it, it for me – it goes to like the conference realignment, and I said it's it was the only when it became weird for me is when I was flipping through channels and Big Ten Network opening week at eleven o'clock mm-hmm. had Washington and Sacramento State whoever the heck they played. Yeah. That's when I'm like, oh yeah, Washington's a Big Ten. Like it, I okay, Miami's going to Cal on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right? USC just went to Michigan. Oh, okay. So, and listen, you have to understand that this is a guy who, when he wants to watch his team play six weeks out of the year, he needs to see if it's Tuesday or Wednesday. So, yeah. I mean, the, the, the kickoff thing, it's, yeah, because it, you know, the Big Ten with its three national network deal, yeah, if you're – if you want to watch one team every week, it's probably a pain for everyone to go, oh, wait, are they on CBS at 3.30? Are they on NBC at 7.30? Is this the, the, the big noon kickoff? Which, by the way, if you listen to Gus Johnson do those promos, he's not saying noon. Mm. Listen carefully. What's he saying? He's, it's nude. If you listen, he says big nude kickoff. Well, they get more yeah. viewers. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, they're hoping. So just, just listen to that when, when you hear it. Yeah. You, you won't un- – yeah, see, I got I, Danny's I, attention. I, 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 you, won't un- you won't unhear it now. My favorite Gus Johnson call was when <laughs> Denzel Ward lit that kid up from Maryland. He goes, where's the barbecue? Yeah. <laughs> Screw my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Miles, should we be concerned about Iowa? I know that's an arrogant statement to say, and you put it on paper. I did. No, no, yeah. no I, I don't think so at all. I think this is one of those games where people are going to say, oh, here comes Iowa. Here comes that great defense. Here comes them running the football. <laughs> Look, Ohio State is not going to run the football early, but it's going to be by plan. They're going to go yeah, high I, tempo. They're going to throw the I football. Agree. Will Howard's going to have a 300-yard-plus day, oh. and then in the second half, they'll start running the football after they worn down – Look, if you look at that secondary of Iowa's defense, they can't match up. They, they will not yeah. match up. And I think Ohio State defensively will be good enough. Tyler Williams will be back. That's going to be a huge difference stopping the run game. 100, 102 to 6, is that what you're – no, I, I think Ohio State definitely gets 35-plus. Uh, I think they get 42, and Iowa gets maybe 14, uh, one touchdown yeah. in the fourth quarter. Is that how you guys see it? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't think this is a trap game for Ohio State at all. I'm with you. If it wasn't Kinnick, I think there would be a little bit more of a concern. That don't want to play there issue. ever. No. Yeah, if I could yeah. never play in Kinnick again, that'd be but that'd be. good great. news is yeah. there will be like 24 teams in the Big Ten, and it'll be like once every eight years. I'm so. fine with I got that. some lousy see, McDonald's food in Iowa City one morning. I'm not kidding. It's <laughs> terrible. See, I'm waiting for – the Ohio State USC kickoff to be 10 p.m. one year, and then See, come tell me about that, bad kickoff times. That I don't on the think, peacock. Yeah, I that I don't <laughs> think will ever happen. But well, that's it, the speaking of USC, I'm not. I, I, you are more likely to see it the other way, where you're going to see someone. Is it's only a matter of time until these West Coast teams complain about they don't get the noon window. You're going to see right. someone on the West Coast with a 9 a.m. local you're, kickoff. You're going to see Minnesota upset USC this weekend. Bad weather conditions. USC. I will tell you why that won't happen. Time. I will tell you why that won't happen. DJ Fleck. P. J. Fleck. <laughs> ice tell you what, skuma, bro, ice cream, whatever. He's I tell bro, you what, hated bro. him as a receiver in Northern Illinois. I can't tell you how many years of my fandom his teams have ab- abs. And first of all, you want to like you think Iowa is this godforsaken barren place? It yes. Is. Go to <laughs> DeKalb, <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 They build no. tractors there I agree with uh, the yeah. distinguished gentleman, Randy Roberts. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. The floor is yielding to Miles. We're going to start with you. Let's go with our Power 5 football rankings this week, as if it's a surprise who you're picking number one. <laughs> hey, guys. I got Marion Local in what? there. What? I know it. I know yeah. it. I got Marion Local, Grove, Wapak, Coldwater, and Bluffton. Look, it doesn't matter who plays quarterback at Grove. Um, they're going to run the football. They're going to be physical on defense. They're not going to let people score. The Wapak team is just 
outstanding. I, I, I just can't believe how good they are. Every week you say, well, maybe they'll get challenged this week, but they don't. Cold water. I can't wait for that cold water Marion local game. That's going to be so fantastic. much fun. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the 50 50 is going to be on that night? 14,000. Yeah, right. right, right. That's, that's, I want that ticket. Probably a pretty good guess yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Bluffton, we talked about how good they are. So th- there's my five. Um, it, it is kind of funny you guys brought up. We never bring in Lima Senior, and all they do is score 100 points every single yeah. week, right? That's a good point. Patrick, who you got, Power Five? Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> the same thing as Miles, probably. Yeah, You're change. a smart um, man. Mary, Mary, I mean, Marion Local and Coldwater have almost always been 1A and 1B in the MAC, and it's, that's going to be the same thing this year. Their game at the end of the season is going to be, you know, can Marion Local break the streak for most wins in a row? And then they'll only have one more game to beat Ironton for most, most games without a loss in a row. So Marion Local looks like they, they're poised to do that. But uh, a funny thing, every time Marion Local has had a game or had a streak of longer than 30 wins, it has been snapped by Coldwater. Ah, so they had a streak of 30 wins that was snapped in 2008 by Coldwater, 31 to 14. And in 2014, they had a streak of 41 wins in a row that was snapped by Coldwater, 17 to 14. That game we had on WOSN. Just in case you were looking around. And, and that's what you were going to lead with in the yeah, A block back yeah, then. Right, yeah, that's yeah. right. Which anyway. Uh, <laughs> and they didn't have it. Um, <laughs> although if he had called me and be like, hey, look, man, I won the 50-50 and I'm not coming back in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Randy, Power 5, who you got? Um, I'm going to go, yeah, Marion Local Coldwater probably won too. Um, I got to try to sneak Minster in there somewhere. I really am a big believer in Minster. That's a good athlete. Uh, they do. Um, I will be fine. You know what? I'll be the guy to do it. I'll give Lima Senior some love. Oh, okay. nice. Good I'll get you. them in there. For a five, I, I am – I'll say Wapakoneta. Okay. I think there's uh, – there's a whole group that I think is really. He started to go wall. I think it was Wasion. No, I, I know where you live. This year. No, no, not, not this year. year. Not no. this year. Washington God, Courthouse. God, God, <laughs> God bless my NWOAL. Love them to death, but this is not. Uh, not a great year. Not a great year for them. But did Patrick get his whole five in? No. Oh, you did not. <laughs> How did you not get your whole five in? You said, let's move on. Oh, I did. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Go ahead. I it's apologize. Okay. Bluffton Grove Wapak. That was that was my. That was rounding out my wow, top five. Wow, wow, that's whoa. whoa. <laughs> so like, no like I said, teams. I think it was pretty much the yeah. pretty much the same thing. But I, I just think Wapak is just a really complete team. Like I, I I think I know the type of team that you'd have to construct to defeat Wapak. I don't think it exists in WBL. Hmm. And I think it's a team that probably won't cross paths with Wapak until maybe two or three weeks into the postseason. Yeah. So I think there's a lot going on there. Bluffton Grove at the end of the season is going to be a heck of a matchup. Yeah, uh, Guys, I've got Marion Local, surprise, uh, Columbus Grove, Bluffton, Coldwater, Wapakoneta. I've got Lima Senior on the outside looking in. I, I completely agree with what everybody said here. We're kind of waiting to see what they are and what they're about. We know, we know they can score points, but can they stop really yeah. good teams? What do they do when they play a team that, you know, controls the line of scrimmage and runs the ball really effective and keeps that offense off the field? Uh, we'll see that in the playoffs. Uh, obviously, the cold weather and the, and the bad weather is not going to affect them, but those are my top five and uh, nothing different from what you guys got. Um, I think that uh, you're right, Randy Minster has got a quality program uh, with Brogan Steffi running the show over there, for, and finally healthy after a couple of years of being hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, Coldwater, Marion Local, Bluffton, Columbus Grove, going to be the two matchups of the year. Uh, I've got Wapakoneta at a bath in a couple weeks at Wapak. I'm excited about that matchup, only because I think I think that Bath will right the wrong. You know, knowing what they had, what happened to them against OG. Um, I don't know that they'll beat Wapakoneta, but but I think that you know offensively it'll be okay. What was that look for, Miles? <laughs> I you're, hope you're, it's I hope it's sixty two fifty six and takes three hours and fifteen yeah. minutes to play. Yeah. Not that I know anything about I that. I said I said to my wife the other day, I said, Hey honey, I've got Lyman Senior this weekend. I could be there for a long, long time. And she said, No, I know who they're playing. It'll be a running clock. <laughs> <laughs> Smart woman. Yeah, All right. She is. All right. Guys, thanks a lot for coming on a lot tonight. Of fun. Really appreciate yep. it. This was a great broadcast. You have been listening to the three wise men on WOSN.